With Baltimore Regionals now completed, and many others soon to begin worldwide, the Regulation H metagame has been evolving at an incredibly fast pace. With this in mind, today we will be going over some of the best teams right now. As always, there are tons of teams in contention for this list, so feel free to let me know if you think I missed out on anything major. With that said, let's jump right into things with this Salamence King Gambit Rillaboom team that we saw Justin Tang, Shiliang Tang, and a few others have great success with at the Baltimore Regional Championships. Now, I did take Shiliang's version of the team, so if you are looking for the rental I believe they released as well, I will leave all that in the link, but the EVs in the video are directly from Shiliang themselves, so... Regardless, let's go over this real quick and what I think makes this team so strong. Now, I remember on the last list where I was like, oh, these are the top teams right now. We did have a King Gambit Rillaboom team, but I can assure you it did not look like this. There was a Clefable, there was a Gengar, uh, but this is sort of that adaptation of that team. This is that next development for those Rillaboom King Gambit teams that I was talking about, and I think this team is incredibly strong. So... Once again, you just have this Specs Salamence core, and it gives the team the Intimidate that the team really wanted. It also gives it an, a way to hit our Chalodon really, really well, and an Electabuzz to protect your Salamence. So my main problem with Salamence into our Chalodon was you'd hit it with a Draco, it wouldn't die because they're Assault Vested, and they would kill you back. But being able to redirect anything they want to dish back out away from you, and then hit it hard with like a Specs Salamence, Two Specs Draco Meteors are going to be picking up our Chalodon, right? Maybe you just want to send Terra Fire Heat Waves into a lot of the metagame right now because fire coverage is very, very strong. Dragon Pulse as well as Draco. So if you want, if you think you're going to be on the field for a while, you don't need to lower your special attack. You can just keep dropping, you know, Dragon Pulse's Air Slash. I would say it's a consistent flying move, but we all know it's really not. Uh, most consistent flying move Salamence probably gets that you want to actually use in this format, and it's definitely consistent, right? You're pretty fast, obviously, opting for uh, max speed here at 167, and you can just flinch a lot of things, right? Just like, it's a secondary, out, like, oh man, I'm going to lose, well, I can lock into Air Slash and maybe get some flinches, but it's also just pretty good flying damage, right? It's stab, it's one of the stab moves you're going to use that's not just Hurricane, and you don't have rain on this team, so Air Slash makes a ton of sense here. Uh, in terms of Electabuzz, King Gambit, Rillaboom, this is nothing too new. We saw a lot of this just leading up to Baltimore, and we're still seeing a lot of stuff like this. I'm probably not going to touch upon it too much, but you know, you just get the fake out, you get your setup, King Gambit, you get your follow me support as well. Uh, and in this case, you're also rocking Electro Web support to slow some things down, so your King Gambit, maybe your Salamence, just generalized speed control on Electabuzz is really, really strong. You do have to be careful versus other King Gambits with this Electro Web, but I think as a whole, you're aligning to other King Gambits is just to rely on Sneasler. So I think Electro Web definitely makes a ton of sense. Uh, Helping Hand is also very cool on the Electabuzz, and it's just, you are supporting this King Gambit incredibly, incredibly well, along with this Spec Salamence, whether it's the Fake Out Pressure, whether it's the Redirection Support, there is tons of options just to get these big offensive pieces going, and these four alone are incredible to me, and I'm really curious to see if Salamence becomes a mainstay on these King Gambit teams, because I'm a King Gambit player, and I found it really tough to to cycle in an actual Intimidator on a team that actually did something in return and, didn't, and actually patched matchups that didn't just add to some weaknesses. And Salamence absolutely does that, right? Like, you're, you're weak to Ice over here. No, King Gambit. The synergy between Gambit and Mence is really, really good. Whether you're weak to Ground, you have the Ground Immunity on Switching now. You get the Intimidate. You get you, there, There's just so much stuff. You don't even need to be spec Salamence. You can go, like, a Tailwind mode as well. Tons of options here, but this team in particular did run that choice specs option. Uh, Primarina is probably one of the fakest Pokemon to ever be good. It's good out of necessity for the fact that it fills a niche that really just doesn't exist. I do like the more offensive sets. I think Life Orb or, you know, even Choice Specs Primarina do a lot of damage. So seeing the Life Orb here makes a ton of sense. Got some decent bulk, got actually a lot more speed than I expected this Primarina to have. But I guess you kind of need to at this point. It's also like, oh, they don't really have speed control, but... You know, you get the Electro Web, so maybe you get some things to minus two. Primarina starts outpacing. Even at minus one, with the 106 stat, you're probably still outpacing some things. And overall, you're just looking to do damage with a Primarina at this point. And I think as a whole, 
it, it does what it needs to do and it does it decently well as long as you're you know with the intimidate it definitely patches that terrible defensive stats uh, on the physical side there so I definitely think it's a very cool option Primarine is good uh, it's definitely the best piece I think on this team because now you close out like if you're worried about like cores and like type synergy you got a fairy dragon steel now you now also have a water grass and I guess technically in theory Salamence becomes your fire type but I'm not too worried about that kind of stuff when it comes down to finalized teams it's normally more of a you know we're going to start with this kind of approach just to kind of get something on the board and then the team adapts as it goes right so very cool team but I think something that a lot of players were ready for and then a lot of other players just weren't ready for was the uprising of Sneasler and Sneasler kind of came out of nowhere like, everybody was talking about it. Oh, Sneasler is a funny little guy. You know, Dire Claw is a cool move. And then, I don't think anyone was ready for it to, to have such success at Baltimore as it had. And Poison Touch, in my opinion, this is the better set with the Focus Sash and the Poison Touch. Because you're basically forcing people to go into you twice. And with Fake Out, they can't double into you immediately. Right, so you have to fake. You can. You're more than welcome to fake out something, uh, and you just have speed. You are an incredibly fast piece. Speed is super, super nice to have in this format. You don't see too many pieces hitting this speed stat at all. So having that speed is very, very nice. So you can just go ahead, click fake out into something, potentially get the. I believe it's thirty percent for poison touch. Yeah, get a thirty percent chance to poison your opponent by just by clicking fake out, forcing them to not move, and then the following turn you're still going to be faster. And we've all seen Dire Claw do Dire Claw things, and this move is just disgusting. So you're basically getting a fake out and either a close combat or a Dire Cloth, almost guaranteed. And that's kind of wild. Now, obviously, you know, there's like Tailwind stuff and stuff like that that just does stop you from doing that. But I really do think Focus Sash on the fake out Dire Claw Poison Touch set is one of the best sets for Sneasler right now. And I think this team really, really appreciates it. Because like I said, it struggles versus opposing King Gambit. So having that Sneasler just be able to hopefully be able to preserve this piece, get it into a spot where, you know, you can just position something versus other King Gambits. I think Sneasler's very, very strong right now. And I think this team is definitely one of those more balanced King Gambit Rillaboom squads that we were talking about earlier. And I'm curious to see where this goes. Because I'm sure on the next list, I'll still have King Gambit Rillaboom here. And these other four supports might completely cycle around as well. Uh, but really, really cool team here. Moving on, we have the Dragonite Annihilate Dondozo stuff. And this is most notably known for the run that Lorenzo Arce had at Baltimore. There was also a couple other players on that build. This team did not get released, at least to my knowledge. So unfortunately, no EVs to give out for you guys on this one. Uh, but the concept of the team is incredibly, incredibly cool, right? You basically have Dozo as its own mode, and then you have a balance. Normally, you don't have a balanced Don Dozo team, right? That just doesn't normally exist. Right, it's normally Dozo plus like some hyper offense and they, they're going to make you guess the lead, which I think does put on more pressure into the board state in general. But I really like seeing the concept of Annihilate plus Dragonite. I think the ability to coach a Dragonite that you cannot intimidate, you basically now have an Assault Vest, so you're plus one Spit F. You have a Coaching Boost, so you're plus one Attack and plus one Defense. Good luck breaking through this thing. I had to play against this in round, I want to say six of Baltimore, and it was it was very difficult to uh, to get through. I ended up beating it on like a read game three, but it was absolutely really really difficult to try and cycle through. And it's just incredibly hard to break this mode with the Annihilate and the Dragonite. Oh wait, the Dragonite mode's not gonna work out. Okay, I'm just gonna go King Gambit mode, right? I'll just have my you know I can just coach my King Gambit with the Annihilate. Neither of those modes are gonna work out. Oh, I need to just remove something from the field. Boom. Final Gambit. I think there's tons of options, and I think that's what I like about this team, right? There are so many options you can do, right? You could lead Annihilate Don Dozo, and, like, you turn into Tatsugiri and then wave crash something. I know Lorenzo, as I was talking to them on the podcast, they were saying one of their favorite plays is to U-turn out into a Sash Pokemon, bring into Tatsugiri, and then kill the Sash Pokemon with that Don Dozo that turn. And just like that, you've taken a huge advantage in the game where no one's really capable. Normally, it's you can't break a Sash and get Don Dozo activated on the same turn. So I think having that capability is very, very nice with the U-turn. 
And of course, like you also have the option to lead Annihilate Dondozo and just click coaching into your Dozo as your Dondozo protects. And then if they kill Annihilate, Tetsugiri comes in and they have a plus three Dondozo. Uh, it's just, there's so many ways and so many cool iterations with ways to get Pokemon set up on this team. I think there's, I think it's by far one of the cooler teams I've seen and one of the better teams as well because it's not linear, right? Like some of those other teams that are just really at the top of the meta right now. It's like they have this one way to play. But there are so many options when it comes to this team. I don't think a team like this is really going to go anywhere. I think it's going to stick around for a little bit. Now, obviously, this exact variant I think people are going to start prepping for. And we'll probably try to find some answers to as well. However, I think the concept of this team is sticking around for a while. Then you just also have like Clefable. So once Annihilate goes down and you've coached a couple times, you have... Plus two Dragonite, now supported by Redirection. You have plus two King Gambit, now supported by Redirection, right? There's a lot of things going on here. Uh, Helping Hand is also a very cool option, right? Just, just so many ways to get that extra little chunk of damage that I think a lot of the meta wasn't ready for early on. And I really don't think a lot of the meta is going to change to that. A lot of the meta is starting to become very slow, very defensive, and very well calced for. So like, you know, you know, I was like, oh, my Dragapult lives this, you know whatever like uh, oh i live this dragon claw if they're minus one just for the lack of better of an example okay that doesn't even make sense because the dragon i can't really go to minus one nor does it have dragon claw but you get what i'm saying right so all of a sudden like i can't just rely on these calcs that i'm aware of normally because you have this helping hand right it's just that extra little chunk of that burst damage i don't like i know how much a plus one e-speed is going to do i don't know how much a plus one helping hand boosted e-speed would be doing Right, so there's a lot of options there in terms of just being able to make the right play, and then you just also have Don Dozo mode, right? Like if you just don't want to worry with coaching, you can just lead. I want to say lead Don Dozo, but like you can get some good damage done early, switch into the Don Dozo, and then clean up late game with like a Dragonite with like the E speeds after Don Dozo chips everything. So I think there's a lot of options on this team, and that's one of my favorite parts about it. Really, really cool team. Really, really well built. Moving right along, this would not be a list of top teams if I didn't have the Baltimore Regional Championship team in here. So it had to be on here, guys. Once again, this is Nick Morales' team. Paste and that link to his uh, Twitter will be, will be down there. Be sure to check them out. But we've got this team to talk about. And it's nothing new, right? I'm going to talk about like some of the key pieces, key changes on this. But as a whole, this team is not new right like the Pelipper, Basket Legion, Amoongus, Archaladon, Incineroar stuff there's nothing new going on there there's a few little texts that I will talk about but for the most part like we're gonna breathe through this like Pelipper, Focus Sash, Modest, Hurricane, Weather Ball, Tamil Protect we've seen it before very consistent set especially on rain teams you just get to do a lot with it you get Tailwind uh, support, Weather Ball, Hurricane, incredible coverage especially paired beside Archaladon once again Archaladon nothing new here Right? There, there's really nothing new. The Terra Grass to get around opposing Amoongus, get around out of, out of those uh, ground type attacks that are coming into you. And then just Electroshot, Dragon Pulse, Flash Cannon, Body Press. Like, it's a consistent set for a reason, right? It's really, really strong. Uh, another one of those consistent options is this Amoongus. Once again, opting for no protect. That seemed to be the, the wave in the metagame right there going into the weekend with the clear smog as opposed to protect. Uh, and then just Palm and Puff to heal up some things. Uh, this spread does look a little weird, and I know Nick has come out and said that a couple of his spreads were off. So, uh, you know, it just if I were to take this, you know, 248 is kind of not a number, so I would just drop it down to 244. And then I'd probably just bump up to 70, and this is 188, I think, needs to be the number, right? No, no, 192 is a number. Okay, crazy. What am I? Oh, this is level 100. No, no, 192 is not enough. This is a level 100. I was like, what's going on here? But yeah, so I would go down to 244. Uh, and I believe, like I said, 188 is the number, and you can just go up to 177. That gives you the exact same stats with an extra point in defense. Uh, I'm not in the business of fixing these EVs. That was just like a uh, an obvious one that I saw. Now, like, you know, the 248 is just not a number. It was technically one of the inefficient ones. Um, in terms of the mouse hold, this was a really, really cool tech option here. And I don't think it's something people were ready for. People were ready for, you know, the Pelipper Archaladon, the redirection being Amoongus. They weren't ready for that redirector being able to get Archaladon to plus six defense. And you can just send that off in a lot of games, right? You can just send that off into the Archaladon. And like the moment they think you're going to proc the Archaladon, they're not going to be protecting. So now all of a sudden you have this 
179 speed stat Pokemon launching off population bombs into your opponent, which is going to hurt. We saw it in finals. It took out the Ninetales. It took out the Dragonite, right? This is a very cool adaptation. Uh, I know Nick has also said he was max attack, not max HP. He did make that last minute change to being offensive mouse. Uh, though, so that's definitely something also to consider as well there. But uh, other than that, I mean, Incineroar will be Incineroar here, right? Uh, and in Basque Legion, I like this change a lot. When I was testing Rain, choice band felt very, very restrictive. So not being restricted now by a choice band, I think is incredibly, incredibly strong. Because you can just get a wave crash off, and then it's not like they can switch in a resist to wave crash, and all of a sudden you're useless. Now you can get a wave crash off, they switch in a resist to wave crash, well, I'm just going to last respects now. Or I'm just going to protect, let you take out a piece, and then I'm going to last respects, and I'll get an even stronger last respects, right? There's so many cool things you can do just with the ability to protect Basque Legion, with the ability to switch your moves around. I think this is a really, really cool change. Obviously, you don't get the last respects as hard. You don't hit anything quite as hard, but you don't necessarily need to. I think the trade-off of that damage for the ability just to switch moves around is incredibly, incredibly strong, and I'm happy it went to regional because I think people were just tunnel vision and going, oh, yeah, Basque Legion, Choice Band, send it. So seeing other options like this win things and do well is very, very cool to see. Moving right along, we have Garchomp, and there are a lot of Garchomp variants I could have taken for this list. Obviously, we have, you know, the Palchua Garchomp. I did decide to use the uh, Z Garchomp here with the Vivalon because Vivalon is cool, and it's also just something I really want to talk about, as well as I think the team just being incredibly well built, right? You got a lot of cool options with the Porygon 2, with the Terra Fighting to help beat King Gambit stuffs. Um, Goldango is a huge, huge threat in the format. So like P2 Goldango Instant is a mode on its own. And then you just have like a Vivalon Garchomp stuff. I will get into the Vivalon in a minute. Um, but once again, guys, no EVs on this. Uh, Z did not release their paste, so uh, we will not have EVs here. But overall, pretty standard looking gold angle. Looks like a pretty decent, nothing crazy here. You know, nasty plot setup. Uh, iron plate for the steel moves. Same thing as metal coat, guys. Uh, I don't know why they opted for iron plate, but they did. And then obviously Terra Dragon has that defensive Terra. You got the Incineroar. Once again, just fake out Flare Blitz, knock off parting shot. There's nothing new going on with an Incineroar here. And same with this Porygon 2. We saw a lot of Porygon 2's uprise. The next team I have as well, spoiler, is going to be a Porygon 2 team. And just that Terra Blast fighting to pressure King Gambits. And then just Terra Blast Ice Beam. So you have a normal move, a fighting move if you want a Terra. And then Ice Beam. Which is just very consistent coverage all around the board. You get Trick Room for extra speed control on this team. And then you just get to recover up. Porygon 2, it is a more laid back format. It's not as hyper offense as before. And Porygon 2, it can be built to just not die nowadays. And when you have a Pokemon on the field that doesn't die, recovers that health back, and then can win damage trades because of download... I would go ahead and say that's pretty good, right? We saw Porygon 2 have a huge success rate in Baltimore, and I frankly don't think it's going anywhere. The digital duck is back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but once again, this core on its own is just incredibly strong. Primarine is cool. Shout out to Citrus Berry Primarina. Like I said, uh, I was happy earlier on with the, you know, the offensive items on Primarina, and I do think that's more, in general, the easier way to use Primarina. But I myself use Citrus Berry. I loved it. So seeing Citrus Berry on this team as well, it, it just kind of embraces that I'm going to be a bulkier piece and I'm going to use this as my Haze Bot. I'm going to use this just to not let them set up on me. And then I'm just going to try and win damage trades with like Hyper Voice and Moonblast. Right? Because Moonblast is still a really strong attack coming off of base 126. Right? So this core of four is incredibly strong and... Honestly, I'm happy to see it do well. It's just a, it's a core that's like right up my alley. So seeing a core like this do well is very nice to see. And then we had a huge uprising in Garchomp over the weekend, right? Garchomp is surprisingly well paced in the meta, uh, well well placed in the meta game right now, and it's just doing a lot of things where other Pokemon can't right now. It's actually pretty fast in this format, right? So base 102 speed is very very nice. But the thing is, there was like three years in VGC, if not more than that, where Garchomp used to be fast, and then it was like, nah, let's, as Game Freak, let's just introduce like a million things that are faster than it. Garchomp's gonna suck. 
But now that Garchomp seemingly is one of the faster Pokemon in the format again, it is now one of the stronger threats in the format. You know, very limited ground types right now. Both of the ground types that we have that are normally good are the, both the Ursalunas, and both of those guys are pretty slow. So having a big, fast uh, ground type option here, being able to, you know, hit those Archaladons really well, right? Stomping Tantrum, Dragon Claw, both very, very nice. Uh, Life Orb set just to do even more damage. Uh, Terrifier for the defensive Terra type. And then Earthquake paired beside Vivalon, which it's something you can play to that your opponent may not be able to get around. There was a lot of redirection going into Baltimore, whether it was Electabuzz, Clefable, uh, Amoongus, right? Just being able to click Earthquake and hit both Pokemon, pair that with big flying coverage is very, very nice. Now, Vivalon here is a very cool Pokemon, and it's also a Pokemon I kind of, you know, I didn't want to say, I want to say brushed off, but I definitely analyzed wrong. I was looking at it as a friend guard bot, and basically what you get with friend guard would be, you know, you're protecting your allies, and because you have a focus sash, you're probably keeping your allies alive for two turns. And I was like, yeah, that's probably good enough to make Vivalon work. But as you guys can see here, Z actually ran Compound Eyes, and I do now see why Compound Eyes may be better. Um, you know, just that accuracy boost, you know, the, so the sleep powders are probably, I think that's 97-ish. I don't know, I can't math right now. But anyways, sleep powders hitting a lot more consistently. Hurricanes going up to, I believe, 91, doing a lot more of a consistent damage that way as well. Then you just get redirection to protect. Uh... Opting for no Tailwind here is really cool as well. I feel like there's an option to put Tailwind on a team like this. Probably would drop Protect because I think the other three are super important. Uh, and then you just have a Sash. So now you can redirect, make sure you're guaranteed to survive two attacks, and pretty much do whatever you want with this with it, with this side of the field, you know? Uh, the Vivalon and Garchomp together, that duo works very, very well. Right? You could almost drop Sleep Powder. And then run friend guard as well, but there's a lot of things. But anyways, this is the team here. It's very, very cool. You know, you get to support, you get to support one of the bigger pieces in the format right now, which is Garchomp. And then you just have this like balance core of like that you normally see on those like more dedicated trick room teams, which we're actually going to get into in a second, where it's the Porygon, the Ince, and the Goldengo. So you can out bulk your opponents, but then if you need to, you can just, you know, go on the offense with this Garchomp. You could go on the offense with Goldengo, Garchomp, have the Vivalon supporting those two pieces, not letting them die and get mass and just get a good chunk of big damaging attacks off. And if you're killing the right pieces and you're killing the threats to Porygon, Porygon isn't going to die. Maybe Incineroar is a good cycle piece there as well. It's just a really well-supported team. Very balancey concept, and I'm really liking it. I'm thinking it's going to go far into future uh, iterations of this team, into future regionals as well. Keep an eye on Vivalon Garchomp, stuff like this, guys. I think it's going to be really good. Closing off the list, we have the Porygon 2 Ursa Luna team that was literally, I think, everywhere at Baltimore Regionals. Uh, if you played through the tournament and didn't play this team, like a full nine rounds and didn't play this team, I would be impressed because I think there was a good chunk of players that actually brought this team. Perhaps the most notable Pokemon on this thing is Flamigo. Of course, guys, this is Toler Web's version. It was officially released. Once again, as always, link down below for that. But uh, no, it uh, did get top four in the tournament. It got fifth as well, different variant though. But Overall, team is incredibly, incredibly strong, and it was a very good meta call going into Baltimore. However, now that people are aware of it, I do think the team may need to adapt a little bit. However, at the point right now, until I see those adaptations, I think this team is still one of the strongest ones out there because you just have so many options, right? Like, Instant Amoongus P2 and Goldango. I'll throw Goldango into that mix. This is nothing new. We've had those four Pokemon do incredibly, incredibly well on numerous different occasions, right? Just the support you can have around Porygon 2 with Incident and Amoongus, just don't let your Porygon 2 die. You win damage trades still, right? Whether you're pollen puffing your Porygon 2, whether you're recycling for Regenerator, whether you're cycling in Intimidate and aside pollen puffing your Incident to heal off that damage. These three, if played correctly, are a very, very problematic trio to actually take down. And then you pair this with a big Trick Room Sweeper in Ursa Luna, and you can do a lot, right? Because I can have Amoongus Porygon, it's like, you have to respect the Rage Powder Trick Room, 
But you also have to respect the fact that I could just, you know, switch out Amoongus hard trick room and then bring in Ursa Luna immediately, get the flame orb and have four turns with Ursa Luna, right? And there is so much potential to just pl outplay your opponent by ways you can cycle into Ursa Luna, by ways you can cycle around instant Amoongus Porygon too. There's so many, so much potential to outplay, so much potential to cycle around with this team. And I think the key here is get multiple trick rooms up because a lot of players are able to get through one set of trick room, right? However, that second time trick room goes up, it becomes a lot more problematic. And with Porygon 2, supported by the, the Amoongus, by the Incineroar, it's giving you so much more potential to, you know, okay, you know, they're double protecting here, let's just heal on up, and then next turn I'll just get Trick Room back up. You know, you have the cycle into the fake out on the last turn of Trick Room, so that way the next turn you have your fake out pressure. There's a lot of options here just to reset Trick Room, and I think that's one of the key options on this team and why it's doing so well. Because like I said, you get through the first first set of Trick Room, it's like, oh, their Porygon 2 and Amoongus are still like almost full health. Let's... uh apparently have to cycle you have to cycle through it again right like how am i going to do this again i got through it once but am i not am i going to get through it again uh and then you just have the goldengo and the flamigo here and these are just the fast mode on this team scrappy is a very very nice ability not being able to get intimidated by the let's say the opposing incineroar cycle uh but more importantly flamigo just fighting type coverage hits everything incredibly incredibly hard and what are you going to do? Terra Ghost out of it? No, sorry, I'm Scrappy. I'm hitting you for effective damage regardless. You can't get out of that, right? So, like, all those mouse holds, right, that would normally want to, like, maybe tear a Ghost out of a close combat. I mean, they can, but they're still taking damage, so the Terra type's not necessarily worth it. Um, it's interesting to see that Flamigo is Terra Ghost on Toller's team. I know a lot of them are running Stellar to be able to just get that extra burst damage out there. But I think as a whole, Ghost is probably fine looking to get around fake outs. Uh, close combat, Brave Bird. And you run Wide Guard on this team and along with Protect, right? And just Wide Guard is very, very cool. If anybody's trying to hit you with like a spread attack, you can shut that down immediately. Right? It's just a really good and consistent move, and there's just nothing better on Flamigo. I mean, like, I believe you get upper hand and stuff like that, so there are things you could maybe test. Do you get Tailwind? You do get Tailwind. Uh, anyways, I don't know if you would want Tailwind on a team like this, right? This is definitely more of a, a slower paced, I'm going to just focus on getting my Trick Room up kind of team. But as a whole, technically, you could get Tailwind if you really wanted to run Flamigo. And then, of course, guys, we know all about Goldango here. They did opt for the Life Orb set on this one. And they opted for max speed, which I really do like. We don't see a fast mode on this team, and I think that was one of this team's weaknesses. So having that faster option on the Goldengo just kind of allowed you to have that mode where it's like, I have now a fast piece, right? Because like if I cycle around instant P2 Amoongus or Saluna, I don't really have that like decently fast Pokemon that can actually do something outside of Trick Room. But... With the Goldengo now, I now have that option because it's built to be max speed. So I can still cycle around with Incin Amoongus P2 and then just a, a Goldengo, right? Like you just have that option to go on that fast mode or at least a little bit of a faster mode that these hard Trick Room teams don't normally have. So very, very cool team here, guys. But that is going to do it for this one, guys. Let me know, as I said at the intro, if you think I missed out on any up-and-coming teams, any teams that are actually well-cemented into the metagame right now. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. But as always, guys, this is just my list. It was really in no particular order. If you guys do enjoy this type of content, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really does help with the channel. And of course, I really do appreciate it. But with that, we're going to get on out of here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you all in a future video.